Welcome back, Saints fans. It's my pleasure to introduce you to the one and only Matt Fredette from the class of 2007. Matt, you know, welcome to the Saints and Alumni Connection show this weekend, and it's a pleasure to have you here today. Thanks for having me, Mike. You know, uh, you know, we, we've, we've uh, seen the highs and lows of Sienna together. We've probably cracked a few beers together, more than a few. Uh, That's for sure. Stone Lights probably back in the day, but, uh, you know, maybe a bush light. I don't know. But it's been, uh, we also cracked and studied hard in, in classes. But, uh, you know, take me back to those years at Sienna. Take me back to 03 to 07. I mean, what was the anticipation like for you to come to Sienna College from New Hampshire? Man, um... Well, first of all, yeah, thanks again for, for having me. It was, it was awesome to, to, to hear from you and awesome to just kind of think back on my time at Siena. It was, it was a special four years, uh, as I know it was for you. Absolutely. Um, I don't know. I, I'd say anticipation is, is, is a pretty good word, right, leading up to freshman year in 2003. Um, some nervousness, no doubt. Like, like many people, I didn't, I didn't know more than one person going into Siena. I had a friend from back in New Hampshire where she was going to Siena as well. Um, but other than that, really nobody, right? And so right. I, I remember specifically something that my dad said to me uh, on the way driving to Siena sticks out. He said, you know, you're, you're about to meet some of your best friends that you're gonna have for the rest of your life. So you should be excited. And um, that was so true, right? Thinking back on it. And I think when you talk about anticipation, that was always in the back of my mind and, and what really kind of led to a lot of the excitement part of the, the anticipation, right? It's just knowing that you're about to sort of embark on, on this journey, if you will, and, and meet some of your, your best friends, which I know we'll talk about, but that certainly ended up happening. And uh, a lot of that, right, you know, right in Ryan Hall in 03, right? Where you were, right? Oh, my goodness. And yeah. you're, you're absolutely right. The anticipation is crazy. I know Sienna's just hosted a couple of preview days now that we do for the incoming freshman classes. So they get a, a glimpse before they come in for moving day. I don't think we had that uh, when we came, but I know uh, it, these, these preview days have been jam packed and, and loaded and they hear from the president and they do icebreakers. So now nice. they get to know a little bit, a few more people when they uh, enter, enter campus, but you know, I think we did all right. Yeah, sure. And the classes are bigger from what I hear now, which is yeah. terrific. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and they're going to be living all over the place, but one place that we lived was, was Ryan Hall, right? I mean, the, the great, the, the the amazing place of the infamous Hall. Yeah. oh the infamous Ryan Hall what do you what's your what's your big takeaways from our time living in Ryan Hall as a freshman um again thinking <laughs> back on it I would have not rather lived in any other building other than Ryan Hall um you know it it, it certainly wasn't uh the most glamorous maybe of the of the buildings at the time right we had padua which was brand new some people lived in there um some people lived in the larger buildings hennepin uh being one of them but some of my best memories uh, right. of sienna are right there in ryan hall i lived in the lower level so i guess you would you know refer to that as the basement level yes and the garden level if you will the garden level <laughs> <laughs> right and uh, you know thinking back getting tripled probably sticks out more than anything in Ryan Hall. Cause I was moving in again. I was on the garden, the garden level. <laughs> um, I was probably a hundred and four, all of 140 pounds coming in freshman year. I move in with two football players, right? When Sienna had a football team, I think it was canceled that year or the year following, but um, you know, I get tripled with these, these two guys who are <laughs> terrific guys, but you know, I was kind of all packed up in this room in the basement uh, but made absolutely the best of it. And again, just made relationships on, on, on that floor that lasted all four years and beyond. So. so, I mean, and that's, and that's the great news. And, you know, those, those football guys were, were tremendous. I remember one guy, Tom Drew in particular, who was, he was, just, he was a roommate, Tom Drew and Pat Callahan. Uh, yeah. Pat Callahan. I, yeah. I hope, I hope these two guys find this interview. We're going to send it to them. And, we should, uh, you know, they were, they were just the absolute best. And we uh, had a lot of laughs. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Still follow them on social media. They're uh, awesome dudes. And, you know, and that's the thing about Sienna. They bring in the best quality student to, you know, uh, to experience the education for a lifetime. And, you know, you know, we, we, we kind of touched on it recently here, but, you know, Sienna's expecting the largest freshman class for the third year in a row. Um, it's a credit to our admissions team, to our alumni, to our, our faculty and staff to make this place as special as you remember it. And then to even advance it um, to the place it is now. I mean, there's so much, great news coming out of Siena where, you know, we, we were voted a top eight Catholic college and, uh, you know, we're the number one um, college in, in, in New York for getting a, a job out of college. So uh, awesome. that's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's incredible stuff. So, you know, it's, it's, it's 
fun to see that our freshman classes have continued to rise and meet our expectations. But, you know, what kind of advice, you know, you, you've set the tone as an entrepreneur out there in the world. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that in our next segment. But what kind of advice would you give to these freshmen that are, are coming into Siena and, and really trying to find themselves? Man, um, <laughs> putting me on the spot. It's, you know, it's such an important time in, in life. There's sort of this, you called an anticipation. I'm sure there's a lot of apprehension for some that, that go in. I think the, the best thing or the best advice that I could, I, I could give these folks would, would be just look at it through the lens that you should be opening up as many doors as possible for yourself yes. while you're on campus and after you leave campus that will continue to do so, right? I, my wife laughs at me because I say, you know, it's important to live a life of yes responsibly, right? But like <laughs> it, living a life of yes when you go into school could just saying yes to meeting as many new people as possible, right? Engaging with your professor, leaning into your, your studies, uh, you know, getting involved, whether it's on campus or off of campus, and really looking at it as like you should be experiencing as much as possible in those four years. And even if it's not immediately obvious how that's going to benefit you, you know, at the time, I can assure you it, it will. You'll be planting your seeds freshman year that will kind of grow throughout your college career in those four years and beyond. So uh, do as much as possible. Live a life of yes. Meet as many people as possible and have a lot of fun while you're doing it. See, Saints fans, this is the type of yeah. guest we get on the Saints and Alumni Show. Again, my guest today is Matt Fredette from the class of 07, co-founder, creator of the Wanderlust Group. And we'll get into that a little bit more in our next segment of uh, uh, such creations as uh, Dakwa, uh, marinas.com, and campouts.com. And we're, uh, this is very exciting stuff. We'll, we'll get to that. But, you know, we're still on this Siena topic, Matt. And we're, you know, it's, as we all kind of begin this new academic year and it brings back a, a flood of memories and, and, and uh, expectations What's kind of your favorite memory when you look back? You know, it's our 15 year reunion coming up in June. So I'm sure we, you know, we kind of crazy on all this stuff. It's crazy, right? It's it crazy. Is. So what kind of, when you look back on your four years, what kind of memory sticks out? I'm sure it's a, a friendship kind of thing, but you tell me. Yeah, it, well, it is. I mean, it's so, it's such a hard question to boil down into one moment, right? Like for me, everything comes back to the people and the relationships I've made and just an amazing amount of good times and good laughs with those people, whether it was on campus or taking trips off campus, road trips, summers, like you name it. Um, so again, it, it all, it all comes back to the people. I mean, one thing that, that comes to my mind is DAPS, which I don't even think DAPS is, is there anymore. Right. But it, it's there in spirit. It's okay, there, in, there spirit. in spirit. So <laughs> certainly some good times there, but um, you know, one thing that was probably life defining for me in some way was just my study abroad experience. And I know I'm not unique in that sense, but Sienna, you know, opened up that opportunity for me. I went to New Zealand um, and that was just sort of a transformative time. Sienna made that possible um, and it was, it was incredible. So when I would think, when I think back at that time in my life, that is certainly a standout. New Zealand, what an experience, you know? Oh, it was incredible, yeah. Oh, you know, I know we had a couple of buddies that go to, went to Argentina and London and, uh, and Spain and they absolutely in, in, came back a, a different, more experienced person than just, a well-rounded person and uh, yeah. more culture. You can't, you can't beat it. You can't I was beat thinking it. about it too. It's like, that was such a fun time when everyone got back. So, you know, I went first semester junior year, I believe. Um, a lot of my friends did the same thing. Obviously some people went second semester, so we didn't get to see each other for the following year, but that semester when you got back and you, you missed everybody, other people were coming back with all their different perspectives and their different friends that they met. It was, it was just so much fun. Yeah. Um, and I, and and I mean, DAPS really benefited from us uh, going down <laughs> yes. and, and sharing those memories. But absolutely. Uh, in fact, uh, we did create some DAPS t shirts uh, last year, and uh, I, I'll send you one. All right. So it's got I, a nice I'm DAPS. Sure those are a hot commodity right now. I feel honored. <laughs> oh, oh, man. They, it, was a, it was a pretty cool thing. They, they let great. us use their logo for it oh, nice. uh, to do some development work, but it was pretty cool. I will treasure that if you have any left. <laughs> I got you. I got you. <laughs> uh, just a couple more here in our first segment, Matt. Like, you know, we, we talk about uh, people you stayed close with throughout the years. I kind of, is there anybody at Siena during your time that kind of had a, uh, the most impact on your, on your experience? Was there a certain friend, friar, um, professor, uh, just uh, someone that kind of stood out? And when you look back now and think, man, yeah, that, that was the person. Yeah. Um, there's a, there's a lot of friends. I mean, I, I, my best friend in the world was a guy that I met at Ryan Hall. 
Yeah. Third day that we were there, my friend Greg Rotundo, um, yeah. you know, so certainly one of those relationships that's been important to me while I was at Siena and, you know, throughout our years afterwards. So, you know, I'm just thankful for friends like that, for sure. You know, again, I can't necessarily say uh, the friendship shaped exactly who I was as a person, um, but contributed, no doubt. And then I, you know, look at just my experience sort of academically at Siena. I can't say necessarily I might have had, you know, a mentor or mentors, but there's been standout professors, certainly, that I think back on that I know in some way, shape or form uh, influenced the career path, you know, that I, that I chose. Like I started as a bio major going because right. I didn't really right. know what I wanted to do. And I loved science and bio, um, but then I ended up changing to business my, my sophomore year. So, you know, I had some professors that I think back on all the time. I know I took economics class with Dr. Trees. He's still yeah, there. He's yeah, an incredible yeah. professor. Um, took some business classes, and I know he he has moved on. But Dr. Raj Devasagayam, yes, think back fondly on, on on those classes. So, again, I know in some way those experiences definitely shaped sort of my my career trajectory, and were kind of transformative. You know, because I was a little unsure switching bio going into business, and then just sort of you know some of those experiences I had sophomore year, um, where they were great. So. Dude. I, I love the people you named and they've, they're, they're definitely Sienna influencers and they, yeah. they, they've, they've made their mark, but uh, you know, we're going to get into this next segment, but we're going to do a little preview here, Matt, you know, outside yeah. of your career, uh, what do you, uh, you and your family like to do for fun? Um, Which kind of leads into your career. Actually. Yeah, sure. No, it, de- it definitely does. Right. Cause you know, we, we like to spend whenever possible time outside, you know, my, my wife, Steph and I, we live in, outside the Boston area uh, I have two young daughters, five and three. Um, so we just like to, to get out whenever possible, whether that's, you know, hiking around town and the, the trails around our house or visiting family down in Rhode Island, getting out on the water or visiting my family up in New Hampshire. Um, you know, whenever we can make time for family and friends to sort of get outside. And that's kind of what we like to do with our time. All right, Sage fans, stay tuned. We're coming back with Matt for that. Uh, he's making a splash out there in the uh, entrepreneurship world. So you're going to want to stay tuned to hear about what he's done after his career at Siena. Thank you for sticking with us on WVCR 88.3, The Saint. Welcome back, Saints fans. You're listening to 88.3, The Saint and The Saints and Alumni Show. My name is Mike Hudson from the class of 07. And my guest today is Matt Fredette from the class of 07. He is the co-founder, creator of the Wanderlust Group. And it's a perfect time, Matt. We're, 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 we're experiencing summer. It's a great time to get outdoors. Sienna actually just had this thing called the Sienna Summer Sweat, where we had a, a biking challenge, a virtual 5K, and we did a, a water exercise. So in June, July, and August, we, we encouraged our saints to get out, experience the outdoors. And, and that's kind of what your company does. I mean, we're that. between, between uh, marinas.com and, and Dakwa and campouts.com. You're kind of cornering in the market on the outdoor lifestyle. And it's... Uh, it's really cool to see one of our own, you know, go out and kind of grab the brass ring and, and go out and kind of become an entrepreneur and do something they're super passionate about. And that's what I'm so proud to bring your story to our Saints community because you really went for it. And that's like the coolest thing that I want to showcase today. And, you know, let me just, let, let's just start. You've always been an outdoorsman. You know, what's kind of your inspiration behind the Wanderlust Group and what's the driving force behind the companies I just mentioned? Yeah, no, absolutely. So, you know, the driving force was really spending a lot of time down in Rhode Island. Um, my business partner and co-founder, Mike, and I always sort of had this entrepreneurial itch to scratch, I guess you, you could call it, and, you know, became familiar with the process of boat reservations, making boat reservations at marinas and how frustrating that was for boaters, right? And we sort of looked at that and we said, really, this, you know, this is the way it is and nothing better exists and, and we should we should solve that for boating. And, uh, you know, we kind of looked at the problem and, and we said, well, there's kind of an interesting opportunity here to do sort of what open table did like in the restaurant space, but with boaters and marinas. And, you know, if we could build a piece of technology that makes marina operations easier and saves them time and headaches, you might be able to remove that frustration on the consumer and the boater side. And so, you know, again, spending a lot of time down in Rhode Island, the Newport, Rhode Island area, um, specifically, that's sort of where the initial concept of the idea came from and, and, and what we wanted to do. And, you know, ultimately, we decided to kind of take the risk and, 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 and start the company. And, 
you know, quickly our mission became for building the product that we wanted to build something that allowed people to just get out of the water more. Yes. And we really, again, made that so core to everything we did when we were building, you know, both the marina software as well as the boater experience on Dockwa. And, you know, over time, we had the opportunity to acquire marinas.com, mm -hmm. which we brought underneath the Wanderlust family. And that was sort of the catalyst for making us understand and realize the broader opportunities that were sort of ahead in, in front of us, mm -hmm. right? There was similar markets that we could solve a very, you know, uh, analogous problem to like the outdoor recreation space being one of them that we were already doing in the marine industry. And again, as, as things evolved, our ambitions evolve and, you know, we've sort of become this company that, you know, our core mission is to connect more people with nature and we're doing that through the product. So we want to build something that's really kind of the operating system for the outdoor industry, for the businesses, but is a product that allows people to disconnect, get away from their screens and actually spend more time outside. Well, and that, I mean, Matt, I think that makes perfect sense because, you know, I, just quickly, I was doing a, a quick reviews. I was looking up reviews of your company and basically all the reviews, it was unanimous in saying, where the heck have you been the last couple of years? You know, I, I, we wish you were here a decade ago because everyone says, you know, this technology is wonderful. It's, it's, it's let us experience so much more at a, at a, much convenient pace and it's allowed us to uh, take our family outdoors and, and really, you know, at a time in, in the world where it's been kind of a, a little um, rough, I guess we could say, you know, with everything that's happening and, you know, and, and we'll get to that, but, you know, I, I just listen to you and I, I, I hear the passion come through. I mean, uh, how much of a passion is it though for you? I mean, is it, it, it's your number one priority besides family and friends, right? I mean, this is, this is a company that's, you, you've, you've built it and it, it's, it's going places. Of course. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's a huge passion, right? It's you kind of got involved in, in this line of work to really be part of building something. Um, and we kind of joke with the Marine industry anyway, it's like we stepped into this industry that was like in 1999 and there's not sure. many verticals or industries you can actually go into anymore where there's that, you know, opportunity for it to be kind of diffused or in uh, changed through technology and, and we kind of entered one of those one of those industries and it doesn't come without its challenges but therein lies a huge opportunity right, right. and so why we're continuing to be so passionate about our after the last seven years is we just pretty much feel like it's just the beginning um <laughs> right like you're starting to see a lot of change happen in the space a lot of that as is due to us, right? And what we built and started to, to, to offer to the, the industry six, seven years ago. Um, and it's been very well received, which really continues to motivate us to continue to build and innovate in the marine industry and, and also elsewhere. So yeah, you're exactly right. It's, 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 a, it's a huge part of you know, who I am outside of you know, investing in friends and family. It's, it's not necessarily who I am, it's what I do, but certainly, right. certainly a huge part of, of, uh, of my passion. Just quick, is there something over the last seven years that sticks out that you're most proud of that maybe there was a problem that you solved or a, a spot that opened up or a piece of technology that you guys created? Is, was there one sort of thing that really sticks out to say, that was it? It's, it's not necessarily just one, you know, because we see the, the use case in so many of our customers play out over and over and over again, you know, where... When we first started, I'll take a place like Edgartown in Martha's Vineyard. Sure. These are high demand destinations. A lot of boaters, people in general want to travel to these locations. Um, the operators of these locations are saying we're very full. You know, we don't have a demand problem. I don't know how much technology is going to help, you know, our operation. And we don't really need your marketplace to send us to boaters because we're full. Right. And what's been very fulfilling for us is over time, when these operators decide to give us a chance and actually use the software on the, on the marina side, the business, the business side, we're, we're transforming businesses. And, you know, that thought they were 100% full and what you're doing is you're actually helping them optimize. So it's, you know, we have so many customers that have doubled their revenue since just dropping in our technology, working with our team, leveraging our software. And by making those operations more efficient, you're also making them way more accessible for the boaters. So we're 
allowing you know us to execute on our mission to getting more people out of the water and connecting with those locations. So again, it's early on, we started working with places like Edgartown, but we started proving that playbook and we've just seen it play out over and over again. And it's, uh, you know, it's great every single time. See, that's, that's fantastic to hear. And, you know, it's, uh, we'll, we'll talk about our, our Stack Center for uh, Innovation and Entrepreneurship in a, in, a, in a minute. But, you know, one thing I, I kind of wanted to touch on is, you know, uh, over the last 18 months during the pandemic, you know, everyone made a, a dash to get outside. Everyone wanted to, to hike, to be on the water. It was, it was kind of the quote unquote safe thing to do, but yeah. it was an experience that you could feel comfortable doing. Uh, did, did you see a rise in the use of your sites during this, the pandemic or was it, you know, you tell me, uh, I'm just kind of yeah. curious myself. No, we, we did without a doubt. I'm, I mean, not unlike many businesses and, and startups, it was, we were questioning in Q1 of 2020, you know, what, what the future looked like. And then after a few months of lockdowns and um, and everything was going on, we started to interest. Uh, we started to notice a pretty interesting phenomenon, right? Where it was really driven by the fact that, to your point, more people were looking for safe, socially distanced activities. And right. we we've always said, even before COVID, that one of our um, sort of biggest, uh, well, one of our biggest competitors is just people's interests and their time, right? So like it might be you going to a concert that keeps you from getting out on the water or going camping. It might be going out to dinner with friends. It might be going to uh, a sporting event, right? And so those competing interests of people's time really for the large part went away. Sure. And that paired with, you know, socially distanced activities, people started flocking more to the water. People started, you know, going, flocking to the outdoors. And I think we're gonna continue to see a lot of that. And a lot of it is, is here to stay. Um, but specific to boating, you know, record boat sales for the last two years, essentially. More people are buying boats. Uh, they need places to put those boats. So marinas are extremely busy. And of course that benefits our, our core business. Um, so just the, 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 the increase in sort of consumer behavior on, on that, from that perspective uh, and just behavior from people getting out of the water, we've seen some tailwinds. And then on the, the business to business side, because two sides of our, our business were really a software enabled marketplace. So the operators use our system to connect with the boaters, but they, they use our whole software to, to run their business in a sense. So we started to see an increase even from operators that before COVID were largely resistant to change. Maybe they had antiquated systems or no systems at all, a lot of cash and check, things like that. A lot of them were looking for new ways to manage things like contactless payments. Um, and we have a point of sale. They were looking for ways to do automatic billing. They were looking for just a web-based solution that might make it easier to manage with a reduced staff or when they're not in the office or on the, on the docks as much. So, you know, on that side of things as well, we, we saw, saw some benefit and in, in, in it increased or at least accelerated the change um, from the business perspective. No, I think that makes perfect sense. And, you know, and one thing that you're doing on the consumer behavior side too is that we've also seen, you know, the the increase in RVs and and people getting out and camping, and uh, you know, one of your your newer uh, marketplace sites that you have is Campouts.com. You know, it's uh, it looks like it could be the most perfect time to start this to to put it out into the into the into the marketplace. It, it, can you give us a little glimpse of what that's going to look like? Because you know, I, I know many people, at least around the Adirondacks, you know, up in, by Siena, all of these camping sites have been booked, all this. So I know people are getting out and, and, and trying to experience all that nature has to offer. What are you guys doing to uh, make that a little bit easier, I guess? Yeah, sure. Well, well, they are. I mean, everything that I just sort of articulated happened in the marine industry, right, is, right. is, is replicated. And even more so in some cases, because the barriers to entry aren't quite as high, right? Where it's harder for someone that isn't comfortable boating to, to go get a boat on a boat and go away for a weekend with their family where it's much easier to go, you know, pitch a tent to the campsite or even rent right. an RV and drive it. Um, so the market tends to be a, bit, a little bit larger because of those, you know, those barriers to entry. So yeah, we think it, it is good timing and um, we're excited about it. It's early on, you know, we plan to, to start testing a product later on this year, early next year on the camp outside. It isn't, it isn't launched just yet. But, you know, we were sort of pulled into it in a way because there are a number of marinas that also have campgrounds as part of their business. Mm -hmm. So we didn't necessarily go and seek it and just, you know, follow the trends 
uh, that that have kind of come because of COVID. Even before COVID, some of our customers were were asking us to have one system to manage, you know, both sides of the operation. So we were sort of pulled to it in a sense, and we just understood that it's really a very similar problem, right? Especially on the reservation side, connecting with these businesses that in many cases are aren't online as you would expect, um, and the lack of systems and process on the actual business side that you can do the exact same thing that we've done in the marine industry successfully over the last six years, just replicate that a little bit of a different product, but we have, you know, a good core piece of technology that, that we can, uh, that we can use to, to get a good jump on it. Yeah. You've got the good core piece of te- technology, but you've got the right people behind it too. You know, we talked briefly about the people that uh, work with you and, and the lifestyle that you create and people want to work with you. And, and uh, it, you can definitely show that it, 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 it transforms through our, our, our Zoom that we're doing currently right now. And I hope it uh, translates to our, our, our listening audience. Uh, yeah, listen, I'll be the first to say, it. you know, I, I always had, you know, like I said before, an entrepreneurial itch to scratch. And I was lucky enough where the opportunity presented itself. Um, but it all came down to the people, right? Like it was, it was something that I would never have been able to do myself. I had three co-founders out of the gate and we we assembled pretty early on a really team of, of passionate, uh, talented people, and we continue to continue to do that. So it all comes down to the people. Uh, so we've been really fortunate, and you know now with everything kind of going on, we're continuing to see a lot of people really connect with the mission, which is super right. exciting because it's making it a little bit easier to to, to hire even, right? I love it. So, I love it. And, and Matt, as we begin to wrap up here, I got two two more questions for you. We've got one one question and a little speed round. Okay, sure. So uh, you know, now Siena has the Stack Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship at, at, at on campus. How much do you wish this was a, a big part of what was here when we were here? Did you wish that was so much? Right? Yeah, I could I could tell you right now that it would have would have made made me very excited, and I would have been involved in it. So yeah, I would I wish it was there um, when we were, but. Sounds like it's incredible that it's something that's offered now. Um, I actually learned about it from you probably a year or so ago, right. not too long ago. Haven't been involved with it in any sense, but yeah, I mean, I would encourage any and all students to get involved in that. That sounds great. It, it's really great, and we have a, a yearly competition called the Spark Tank uh, competition, and it's you know it's it's kind of like a Shark Tank moment for <laughs> our entrepreneurs, but it's really cool and. Uh, I encourage anyone listening, go check that out at uh, Siena.edu. You'll really get a, you're really going to like what you see. So speed round, Matt, here we go to end this amazing interview. Again, my guest today was Matt Fredette from the class of 07, co-founder, creator of the Wanderlust Group. Matt, just quick before we enter this, how can people uh, find these sites? What's the best uh, addresses, uh, social media? Where can they find you? Sure. So Dakwa.com, marinas.com are, are live. Um, Dakwa is on the iOS or the Android store as well. If people want to download the app, play with it. Um, Campouts is not yet live. Campouts.com will be soon, but they'll, they'll see sort of a coming soon splash page on there. Love um, and yeah, feel free to find me on LinkedIn as well. Matt Fredette, I'm pretty easy to, to connect with. <laughs> perfect, perfect. All right, Matt, three questions to end it. Here we go. Best outdoor experience, if you could have one, where would, where, what, would what would it be? Probably New Zealand, uh, fly fishing in the backcountry of New Zealand. I love that. Uh, top marina to dock at? Champlain's on Block Island in Rhode Island. Love that. Finally, where at Siena would be the best place to camp out for one night if you could? <laughs> oh, boy. Um, I'd say just purely for the entertainment factor, we're going to just go on that lawn right in front of Padua. Yes. Padua Beach. Love it. Padua Beach. Yeah. That's yes. it. That's the name for it. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Matt. Perfect. Thank you so much for being a part of this Saints and Alumni show. I, I think uh, I know I had a blast learning about it. And I, I have a feeling uh, we're going to hear a lot more about you and uh, how you advance these companies in the future. I think you're, you're, I think you're really onto something. Well, I appreciate you saying that. And, and thank you for asking me. It was awesome. And uh, great to see your face after all these years, <laughs> actually, virtually anyway. Yeah, no, it, it's, really it, it's it. better to see yours. And, you know, and again, Saints fans, you can find this interview uh, on our Spotify channel or our alumni YouTube channel. Uh, it's going to be posted in, in a couple of days. So, Matt, thank you for joining us on WVCR 88.3, The Saint, on the Saints and Alumni Show. My name is Mike Utzig. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Go Saints.